welcome back. You're with us here on Opening Fire. Take a look at what the Nifty is doing very quickly. Uh, the mid cap index, small cap index. We look at the market breadth on the BSE 500. And I think uh, with 30 minutes of trade behind us, it would be a good time to look at the market breadth as well. Uh, 16 points off on the Nifty. 8478, 8479 is what you've got. Uh, TCS, of course. We spoke with uh, Chandrasekhar and CEO at TCS a while back. Uh, and you heard from him, the stock actually was slipping as we were speaking with uh, the CEO. Advanced decline on your screen, it's uh, even Stevens, 46 up, 47 down. You know, but I guess you can't complain with a 200 point uh, up day yesterday. Uh, you know, you need some time to kind of digest those gains. And I guess uh, some of that is uh, playing uh, uh, here right now. Uh, the other uh, sort of important uh, piece of news, which I think hasn't been, hasn't received as much, as much attention as it should, uh, is the fact that TRAI, uh, which is uh, the regulatory body for uh, the telecom industry, uh, has written in a press release which shows that it is actually now finally standing up to the DOT, the DOT and the Telecom Commission. Uh, uh, let me just quickly explain the issue here. Uh, so the basic point of contention was not about the 900 megahertz spectrum, not about the 800 megahertz spectrum, but about the 21 megahertz uh, of a spectrum band which uh, was to be put up for auction. Uh, the TRAI was saying that put up enough spectrum for auction so that uh, there is, uh, you know, there is, there is fair competition. If you put up spectrum which telecom companies are already using and if you put that spectrum up, only that spectrum up, only that quantum of spectrum up for auction, then it becomes a business continuity issue. Uh, a telecom company which wants to retain that spectrum in a particular circle uh, uh, will have to bid at uh, whatever cost, whatever the cost may be. There, are, there is no option. Competitors can play mischief as well by pushing the price up unnecessarily even if they don't want the spectrum in the first place. TRA I was saying put up enough spectrum so that uh, you know these kind of things will not happen and it's a fair auction which, which I think is absolutely fair, which is absolutely correct. The Department of Telecommunications, the government basically, the ministry basically said, well, we won't put up enough spectrum up for auction. We only will put up 5 megahertz up for auction. The TRA was asking for 15 megahertz of the 2100 band uh, to be put up for auction. So 5 against 15. Uh, TRA yesterday responded to uh, what the DOT has said. And this is uh, what they are saying. And I'm, I'm going to put up some quotes here on the screen attributed entirely uh, to TRAI. Let me start with the first one. Uh, in a supply constraint situation where the government is controlling the supply in the first place, it is unlikely that the discovered price can be fairly termed a market determined price. Uh, that's one. I'll repeat, in a supply constraint situation, it is unlikely that the discovered price can be fairly termed a market discovered price. That's one. Second, uh, TRAI is saying, the auction will not maximize revenue proceeds. More seriously, it cannot pro promote rollout because resources for investment in networks will just not be available. Lastly, rather than stimulate competition, the auction may end up restricting it. I mean, these are, uh, you know, pretty strong words coming in from the TRAI. Uh, and that's the reason we're saying that they're actually now standing up to the DOT and saying, well, this is the right thing to do. Uh, the last one. Uh, TRA says it appears as if the DOT, the Department of Tele Telecommunications, is totally and uh, irreversibly wedded to the 2010 prices. This refers to the price of auction. You know, a lot of the focus uh, in the telecom sector has been about what the price of the auction is. And not enough attention has been uh, paid to the quantum of spectrum which is actually put up in the first place. Uh, and uh, this is what the TRA is doing now. They're saying, well, uh, put up more spectrum up for auction otherwise it's not a fair auction it's not a market determined price i mean if you ask me to bid for something which i need to be in operation in the first place uh, then i will go to any lengths uh, to retain that uh, resource which is the spec which is spectrum in this case so make available more of that resource and then you basically get a better price especially in an auction system of giving away resources uh, we'll focus on this with experts as we go along uh, from the sector, we'll try and uh, speak with companies affected like IDEA. We spoke with the IDEA managing director a few, I mean, actually, I think about two weeks back or so, and we'll try and have them back on this issue. All right. Uh, we have uh, Devendra Pant, who's joining us from India Ratings. Uh, Mr. Pant, good morning. Great to have you with us here. Thanks morning. for your time. Uh, you know, first up, I don't know if you have a view on what's happened overnight. 
uh, with the Swiss National Bank uh, abandoning the Euro CHF peg uh, and the you know uh, destruction, carnage, whatever you want to say, which followed in currency uh, markets. I mean, very important currency crosses. Just a lot. The largest, by the way, the U.S. currency broker has just reported that uh, you know their equity value is now deep in the negative, some 250 million dollars or so. So absolute carnage. Any views on this? Well, uh, if you look at what we are saying is um, the kind of uh, uh, monetary policy being followed across the globe uh, by the different, uh, different countries, central banks, and that is having a repercussion not only on their own currency, say for example, um, do uh, dollar vis-a-vis -vis 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 Swiss franc or euro vis-a-vis -vis Swiss franc, this is affecting currency market across the globe. Uh, though we haven't studied uh, the impact of Swiss uh, franc, but what it does is the moment there is movement in any currency and we are looking at say, say 26 currencies in the US, broad US dollar index and the movement because of kind of monetary policy followed by different central bankers will have impact on the currency on the other markets. Uh, why, if you look at why, why the Swiss, uh, Swiss central bank has taken this step, uh, because way back to uh, a few years back when the Euro, Euro zone was going through the crisis at that time they they packed their their currency that it will not cross 1.2 Swiss right. franc will not cross 1.2 2011 yeah why is this two, coming now according to you yeah because now now they believe is 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 the the kind of uh, things which is expected from the it's from the central uh, from the European Central Bank will have an impact on 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 their currency and their economy so before the before the ecb starts with the stimulus program and which again have problem for the swiss economy the swiss economy is taking step well in advance to 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 safeguard its economy from the repercussion of the monetary easing which is likely to be followed by european central bank okay so i mean uh, U.S. style full-fledged sovereign quantitative easing is uh, imminent now from the ECB, Mr. Pant. You would agree with that? Yeah, because if you look at the kind of uh, situation there is, there are in 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 the eurozone, uh, we are seeing the glo yeah. globe not picking up. The deflation fear is coming true. So the the the, the U.S. style uh, in monetary easing is is quite uh, maybe there in in maybe in a week's time or or maybe 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 today evening or to, or tomorrow morning that can come up at any point of time yeah any point of time 22nd is when the ecb will meet uh, and we'll see i mean you know the the, the big trade uh, globally has been long the dollar short the euro uh, mr panda uh, let's let's think about it for a, a quick bit what if the ECB does not do QE and what if the US instead of raising interest rates and ending QE uh, eventually sometime in 2015 does QE4 you know because uh, and, and I'll explain that in the US now it's not, not so much about job growth and jobs added etc it's about wages right yeah. uh, like we saw with the last jobs number I mean, if that is the case, if that were to be the case, the EU, the ECB not doing QE and US launching QE4, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I guess fireworks will really begin then. Uh, well, the situation is, is, is such that you can't predict anything what is going to happen. Uh, say, if you look at the US uh, job market that has improved relatively better when we are talking about from the unemployment uh, point of view. But if you look at the housing yeah. market that hasn't improved the way the US would like it to improve and that is according to us will be one one factor which will delay as of now the best uh, situation is the US will start tightening tightening interest rate or tightening uh, will start following a, uh, a tight monetary policy that is one factor according to us will delay that now the Japan is always under uh, uh, having a, a, a stimulus. So what it, what it gives an impression that the entire global economy is in ICU, and and how long how long the the, the, the the global economy will continue to run on ICU with a steroid dose? One day that has to to th those all those things has to end, and some sort of sanity has to come back in the global economy. 
बिकॉज वन जोन इज फॉलोइंग वन काइंड ऑफ पॉलिसी अदर जोन इज फॉलोइंग अदर काइंड ऑफ पॉलिसी वन ग्रुप ऑफ कंट्रीज इज फॉलोइंग द पॉलिसी सो वट हैपन्स इज मोस्ट ऑफ द स्मॉलर इकोनॉमीज दो इन द ग्लोबल इन द ट्रेड थ्योरी आर प्राइस टेकर्स दे आर द मेन सफर ऑफ दिस काइंड दिस काइंड ऑफ पॉलिसी मूवमेंट Let's come to India now, Mr. Pant. Uh, interesting what the RBI did yesterday, but I guess more interesting than what they did was what they said. Uh, in the policy statement, uh, the RBI said that further easing will depend on. Actually, before the future guidance, they said we are doing this because of you know inflation coming off and all the usual reasons, oil coming off and etc. Uh, etc. Et to the end, the last sentence in that uh, paragraph was because of government's reiteration on its uh, fiscal consolidation roadmap. right and then in the guidance they said that future easing is obviously also dependent on uh, you know more fiscal consolidation i mean that's essentially what they referred to that's not those those are not exact words in the statement but that's essentially what they meant uh, mr pan so what should we expect in fiscal uh, the budget which is going to be come, is is going to come out uh, 4.1% fiscal deficit mm, 4. Uh, and budget numbers for fiscal 16 will show 3.6 3.7% Are we on track for that? No, not exactly, because even even when 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 government came out with its budget last year July, the 4.1 num 4.1 number, though it appears if one looks mm. at that number, 4.1 percent of the of of the GDP will be the fiscal deficit yes. that looks very good, but the moment you go mm. and look at the arithmetic behind it behind that four point no four. no we don't want to look at the arithmetic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because because we, see, we don't. <laughs> see 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 what we are saying is what kind of monetary policy or easing rbi will do will depend not only no. on the number but the credibility of that number yeah if look, if the look, government look, comes now, out this with this is this is a point i know i know yeah. i know i know this is a point which was made in the last budget the budget before that right mr chidambaram was uh, criticized for this to no end Uh, you know, it's all optical, and uh, it's not really happening. The consolidation is not really happening. Uh, the the debate between accrual and cash-based accounting system, and uh, what how it distorts things, etc. We all know the arguments, but the point is now, uh, and and if it, uh, if there was a any a time for the government to have some leeway in terms of saying, well, uh, we're going to exp- uh, the the fiscal deficit number is going to be slightly higher. you know the number was unrealistic was the last budget when the government had just taken over they could have just said they had all the credibility they could have just said that 4.1 number 4.1% is not true it's actually going to be 4.1% 4.5% say for example right. but they stuck stuck to 4.1% so the i'm just talking about the, i'm without uh, going behind the, going into the arithmetic uh, just the government is now very focused on the level of the fiscal deficit as well not the quality the level as well right it's made right. Uh, and a big issue of it and it wants to stick to it now with the rbi is saying well here's 25 and maybe another 25 if you proceed on that fiscal consolidation map is it the only road that the government will take it can take what's your view uh well uh further monetary easing will solely dependent on again i'm repeating the credibility of fiscal number which comes out for the fy16 budget but there is a trick okay. behind it if you look at look at the last two years even this year if the plan expenditure increases by 15% over the last year's plan mm. expenditure revised estimate i'm talking about even then there is a space of close to 30000 crore for the government so what what we are saying is if the plan expenditure is reduced by 30000 crore from the budget estimate you may end up a plan expenditure growth of close to 15% in this year which, which is in which line is with the previous year and that will give you seen over the last 3 years yeah. i agree with that i agree with that so but actually if you want to get to 4.1% i think plan expenditure will have to be cut not by 30000 crores but by a lot more no see by the, a lot more see they say 60 70000 crores yes but but if you look at what has happened post uh, say if you look at uh, excise collection number for for the december to, uh, 2014 uh, though for yeah. april december excise collection grew by just 1.6% now what is ha- what has happened yeah. is because the prices have fallen so so much crude prices that the government mm-hmm. has increased excise mm-hmm. and that gave them close to 17% growth in excise in 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 uh, in december now look at the situation mm. the number which came out yesterday is 
ओवर रिकवरी बाय ऑयल मार्केटिंग कंपनीज ऑन पेट्रोल एंड डीजल बाय इन द ऑर्डर ऑफ फाइव फाइव एंड हाफ रुपी पर लीटर डेली इलेक्शन आर अनाउंस मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट इज इन प्लेस दे कैन नॉट डू एनी थिंग सो वट विल हैपन फॉर रफली अराउंड फाइव वीक्स ओ एम सी इज विल कंटिन्यू टू हैव ओवर रिकवरी ऑन पेट्रोल एंड डीजल दैट विल गिव यू अ फर्दर स्पेस ऑन योर सब्सिडी फंड so right now we are talking about some yeah, okay, close right. to 20000 crore there will be something coming out from hmm. from there there will be something which is coming from the penalty yeah. imposed on on the coal block uh, deallocation so but still we believe yeah. it's not the 4.1 with all of its best effort they may end up somewhere closer to 4.2 or so right now and for fiscal 16 what it'll be it'll be under 4% Yeah, we believe it will be around around four four percent. We are based on our um, analysis. We believe it will be clo- it will be around three point nine percent or so. It may be difficult to to match what is there in the medium term fiscal policy for this budget until unless mm. the manufacturing sector or industrial sector growth revises back to two thousand three four to two thousand seven eight period close to ten percent. Unless that. Let me happens, ask you, Mr. Pang. Yeah. If, yes. If if uh, if if. Is it possible? Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, is is it is say for example three point six percent fiscal deficit target mm-hmm. uh, for fiscal sixteen and six point five percent GDP growth possible in your assessment? Very briefly. Uh, Actually, uh, why don't you answer that in a yes or a no? Yeah, very difficult. Very difficult unless unless the manufacturing sector goes back to ten percent growth. Because your yeah. your, your okay. main right. main 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 impact is going to come from from the revenue side, not much from the expenditure side. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So 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 uh, the question I want to ask is why is fiscal deficit such a holy cow? Uh, can you repeat it again? Why is the fiscal deficit such a holy cow, which can't be touched? Yeah. No. Which can't see, be which can't be expanded. See, I will rather than looking at fiscal deficit, and uh, I look more as the quality of the deficit, which you touched upon in your introductory remarks. Uh, deficit per se is not bad, but the quality of deficit, mm. which is more important. What we had seen till two thousand three four, again going back three four to 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 two thousand seven eight. Okay, fair enough. So the quality so has improved. It goes back to the same argument that yeah. well, spend on consumption, don't spend yes. on creating assets, right? Yeah. If yes, you do the yes. latter, it's fine, uh, yeah. and uh, there's no problem with deficit financing. Right. So if the government were to ex- uh, say, well, fiscal 16 budget deficit is going to be say 4.5 percent, mm-hmm. more than uh, fiscal 15, mm-hmm. and explain it by saying, explain it really well by saying, well, this is why we need to do it. Mm-hmm. We're going to spend it not in uh, subsidy, more subsidies or uh, consumption, but spend it on infrastructure creation. Mm-hmm. You're saying, well, markets, financial markets will be okay with it. uh they will not because if we look uh, look at the economy the absorptive capacity of the economy is not so 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 much as of as on today yeah so if we are talking right. about say 50, 20% or 15% growth in plan expenditure from the government the economy can yeah. absorb it and they will start that will start attracting private sector maybe if they continue to do improve maybe say 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 five years from now we can talk about the government mm-hmm. plan expenditure growth being at 25% or so but as of now as of today mm-hmm. the the absorptive capacity of the economy or of the system is not such that you can not absorb 20 25% growth in plan expenditure yeah it's a it's a tough spot right yeah i mean uh yeah you think uh, we'll get another 25 basis points in april post the budget again again depend on depend on on the credibility of of that fiscal number so so everything will boil mm. down to, to to the to the arithmetic and and um, if if the credibility number credibility is there so for example they say we we'll, instead of going by 3.6% number or some other number they say okay realistic that we are not yet out of words the growth is not very strong we need there is some some compression of the expenditure because of falling crude prices and others and based on that we believe the fiscal deficit number instead will be around close to 4% or say 3.9% or 3.8% that is that will be a credible number that will be a credible number and if that happens then there may be there may be a cut but as of now we believe whatever numbers will come out from the from the government will be a credible number there will be authentic um, the sanctity to the arithmetic uh, to, the, to that number and based on that we believe in fy16 we will may see 
in in all 75 basis point cut in repo rate by the RBI. Mr. Pan, thanks very much for your time. Good talking uh, to you. Appreciate it very much. Are you coming in? Thank, thank you. you. Take a break here. We're back into Shanti and Kambaram uh, from Kotak Mahindra Bank is our next guest on the show. Uh, she is. Uh,